Welcome to another episode of our conversation on Giants in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. I'm Megan and join me for this series because two heads are better than one is Casey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, this episode is going to focus on two more kinds of mythical giants that are more than meets the eye. Cyclopses and Ettens. <laughs> So, okay, I know we usually ask what's our favorite when we get to the end of this, but I kind of want to ask right away. Out of these two, because I feel like they're very famous and popular, mm-hmm. we don't really have to get into it to know what they are. Yeah. Which one is your favorite? Etten, hands down. Ettens? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't like a good classic Cyclops with one eyelash, you know? like. Well, you asked what my favorite was, oh, okay. not what I didn't like. What you didn't like. Do you like Cyclopses, though? Yes, I do. Okay. They are quite hilarious. Um... And you only got to stab out one eye versus four. That's true. You're not wrong. It's one <laughs> eye versus four. <laughs> so I feel like we have picked we have picked sides from the start. That's fair. Would you rather, as a, as a person, have one singular eye or four eyes? Four. You'd rather have four eyes? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'd want one giant eye. <laughs> we are. I feel like we're really only. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is going to be a, a conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's going to be great. I'm super stoked. Goodness. Um, so why don't we get into it? So because I love Cyclops, I, I feel like it's because I did Cyclops. There's a little bit of research on them here. That I Probably. Maybe I'm a little more. We're just like I'm gonna keeping try, with our sides. Yeah. I'm going to try and convince you to like Cyclops, and then you're going to have to try and convince me to okay. like it. Okay. This okay. This is a fun game. All right. I like this game. All right. So let's talk about the one-eyed giant friends, the Cyclops. Wait. Oh, oh there's wait. a one! <laughs> All right. Megan, you are missing. I am missing. Okay, Casey, you introduce our wine for today. <laughs> okay, today we are sticking with Canadian Okanagan Valley wine. And in true form of Cyclopses and Ettens, we're going with Mayhem. This is a Cabernet Merlot. And so that means, what does it mean? 89% Merlot, 11% Cab Franc, deliciousness in a bottle. Wreaking mayhem as they do. All right. Well, I will be the judge of that. All right. All right. And I would like to point out 90% of the wines we buy are screw tops. So. Yes. Thank goodness. Thank the, thank the gods. Do you remember when screw caps were annoying? It was like, oh, this is a screw cap. Is and this like a real bottle of wine? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like now if it's a cork, it's like, oh. <laughs> All right. Well, love. Cheers. Oh, that's different. That's good. Oh. It's got a little bit of a tartness to it. Yep. I would almost call that like a sour wine. It dries out the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like this is the episode that we're going to digress back into dick jokes. Okay. There's a term for that. <laughs> oh, man. Miss Ma'am, some decorum, please. My goodness. All right, so let's talk about our one-eyed friend, the giant Cyclops. Okay, so how do we start a convo about these folks without actually talking about the Greek and Roman mythology behind them? So they're wrecked in a couple of few different ways, um, such as being servants to the gods or being minions for, like, you know, working for specific gods, like Hephaestus is a very popular one. He was the smith. Uh, I just burped. <laughs> Sorry, that's normal for me. Sorry, guys. Um, but for, like, large, like, um, gods like Hephaestus that need, he's a smith, so he needs a lot of, like, minions to help him move around in the shop and stuff like that. So they're kind of, like, just helpful little beings. Right. Right? Okay. But a common theme is that they, again, they work for the gods in some way as peons or servants. So I can imagine that they live among them in some way in capacity. And will, you will you will find them roaming around the halls of, like, Mount Olympus or just being around to make sure that they're being useful. You know okay. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I know that we've talked a few episodes about, like, also, um, do you remember, what was it, the B- B- Behor? Begor? What was that one that we talked about? The one with the forearms a long time ago. Yes, Brog. Brog. Mm-hmm. Borog. <laughs> yeah. Those ones. You know how they were, like, um, in Coliseums for battle? Yeah. I imagine that Cyclopses were also utilized for the same thing within, like, Battles of the Gods. Like, that kind of stuff. Yes. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're kind of brutish. They're kind of stupid. They're kind of just, like... Yeah. Bumbling idiots, you know. They're kind of like your hill giant, but with one eye. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they can pull this chain to, like, operate this large piece of monstrosity equipment as a laborer. Yeah. But then they also can be thrown into an arena and fight for me. Yeah. Type thing. 
Fair enough. Yeah, get out, get out there and fight for you. But I only have one eye. <laughs> How can I possibly be a great fighter and a great warrior for you? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into fifth edition Cyclopses. They are, of course, one-eyed creatures that thrive in being isolated. Huh. So to the point where scaring folks away from their lairs in, in the wildlands. So they're kind of like the Shrek of oh. fifth edition. Yeah. So, you know, like Shrek the Ogre being like, yeah. get out of my swamp. That's kind of like how they are in D&D fifth edition. So how I kind of spoke in like mythology, they were utilized a lot. So in my mind, they existed in packs or they existed in like groups of ogre, sorry, groups of cyclopses that would cyclops eye. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Plural is Cyclopses. Cyclopses. Yeah, thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they existed in packs of Cyclopses that would be, like, super helpful, right? In, like, myths right. and lore. But in D&D, they're actually characters that isolate themselves. Oh. Um, it is thought that they're actually children of the gods, and yet they have no desire to worship or care for gods in a religious way. So, in short, they're not religious in any way, shape, or form. Even though if they were to be the children of the gods, they would know that gods exist. Right. Okay. Right? Um, they do believe in colonies to a degree. Even though they are recluse, they like to stay in, like, walking distance to another, to another cyclops so they can make trades and keep in touch with each other. Okay. So it's like rural Saskatchewan living. Absolutely. You have to drive <laughs> three miles like, if your neighbor a quarter mile away, you know, flashes their light three times, you know there's trouble. Or... Yeah. You're like, oh, God. Is that a thing? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean... No. I'm matching a cyclops. Like, Come help me. <laughs> Come help me as a cyclops. So it's like, you're alone, but not quite alone. Like, you know, you know where the next, you know, like, little, like, family lives. Yeah. Or absolutely. Whatever. Okay. Cool. Uh, on top of that, they don't believe in money. As they utilize the bartering system with their goods and wares. Uh, and I also love the fact that they are intelligent enough to understand giant, yet they tend to speak in grunts and groans. Ooh. So they they do understand giant. They can speak it. So they could probably do that with each other if they wanted to. But I feel like because they've communicated with their own kind for so long, they don't really have to use their language. They can just be like, meh. Yeah. Like, they know what they mean. Yeah. It's kind of like when you're talking to your sibling and yeah. they say half a sentence and you know exactly what it is that they mean. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of the feel of it. <laughs> totally. Right? It's like, remember that thing that time? And it's like, yes. It's like twins language. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember what you're talking about. 100%. But I feel like it's very classic for like a mm -hmm. brutish looking like ogre kind of creature. Um, they're also easily wooed by magic users uh, as it reminds them of the gods. But of course they get an extra, they get extra irritated when they finally learn that you are not a god. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like they will lash out in vengeance if like you trick it into thinking that you are a god and you are not a god oh, and it's no. like you fucking bitch <laughs> and then like they'll, yeah they'll get really pissed off at you if you do that but they do love magic so like when you're thinking about role playing and like being in like an encounter or an exploration piece with um a cyclops they actually love it when you do magic they're yeah. like ooh ah right that's Shall we fun say, sparkly fingers yeah, just don't lie. So let's get into some let's get into some stats to see what would happen if you did end up fighting one. Okay. Um, they do have a natural AC of fourteen because of course they don't wear fancy things. No. So they just have their own natural armor. A loincloth. Uh, yeah, it's very loincloth esque. <laughs> you know, you know, just a simple loincloth with a little simple belt. You know, yeah. just to hold it up <laughs> under right. its belly. Yeah. Right. Um, they do rely on their bolstered strength and con to feel ferocious, um, as they are chaotic neutral. Okay. So they're chaotic, but for no fucking reason. But they're not going to, like, hurt you to feel like they want to hurt you. You know what I mean? If you slight it, it's going to kill you. Because it's like, fuck you. Right. But if you don't do anything to it, they're like, me. Okay. It's how, I, it's how I read that. They have what we have spoken about before in a few of our other Giant Friends episodes, which is poor depth perception. Oh. Oh, so, no. Oh, yeah, one eye. Yeah, okay. they, have, they have the one eye, right? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, for those of you that forgot and haven't listened to that episode, because I think we did we did cover, like, some other giants that have poor depth <laughs> perception, basically what it is is that you do have disadvantage on attack rolls that are more than 30 feet away. So, despite the fact that they can throw rocks, they're not very good at it if you're more than 30 feet away from them. Yeah. Because once you hit 30 feet, you're rolling with a disadvantage. Right. So, I feel like you're more, like, close range throwing a rock at someone's face or clubbing them across the head with a rock. You're not really throwing 120 feet like you would other classic giants. Yeah, fair. Yeah. 
Um, they do have a multi-attack, of course, with a great club, but I feel as a DM, you could customize this to any type of weapon for a Cyclops. So think about what kind of Cyclops you have, because I imagine that if they're living within a colony that's a couple feet away or like a couple yards away from another Cyclops, you they could be farmers. They right. could be um, they could be cave dwellers. They could be uh, anything that like lives within the wild, shall we? Like or like a hunter, shall we say? Like this guy down the street hunts things for me. Well, I grow his grain. Right. I feel like that's kind of how they live. So like if you were gonna be a farmer, I feel like you could have a pitchfork. Yes. Or, like, a piece of your fence. Yeah. I, I'm thinking, like, pull a fence post out and, like, the barbed wire yeah. wraps around it. And Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're a cave dweller, then you have, like, um, a giant rock that you throw at people. Yeah. Or a, you break off a stalagmite. A stalagmite. And it's... Ah! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and yaw, yaw, stab, stab. So I feel like that's the thing that you can definitely get creative with as a DM if you want to, want to like, flavor it to what type it is. Because you imagine you as a team rock up to a cyclops and it's holding a pitchfork. It's like, yeah. why do you have a pitchfork? <laughs> I love it so much. Right? And it's like, dude, I'm a farmer. Like, I'm just, like, bailing my hay. Like, what do you want? But, yeah, that's kind of, like, what a Cyclops is. But, like, if you think traditionally of Cyclopses, like, I feel like when you think of where you would see one, I, I traditionally really go to, like, a labyrinth or something where you would throw one in where, like, your group would have to fight it for some reason or it's in a coliseum that you're going to have yes, to battle it. that's like, where that's, I go to. That's where I go to. I don't really think of where they actually come from. I think of them as captured um, entities that are being used for a purpose. Yeah. Whether it's to fight or to be a servant to um, a lord or a lady or what have you. Yeah. Um, or guard a castle or guard something. Yeah. Like, or like stuck outside. Yeah. Or like guarding a jail cell or something mm -hmm. like that. Like you're in a dungeon and they're in the jail wandering around. Or they're in the jail with you because they captured a cyclops and now you're sitting in jail with a cyclops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I traditionally think. I, but I do love doing that flip reverse of like, no, they, they do technically have colonies that are, that work together. They trade together. Like they, mm -hmm. they, like they're not necessarily overly intelligent creatures. In fact, they're, they're written as being really stupid, but I feel like it just comes back to like basic needs. They're like, I need to eat at I need to be strong enough to fight, I need a place to live, and I need to be able to, like, survive. Like, they're survivalists. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have all these reasons to exist, right? So I I feel like they're kind of similar to, like, how I say, talk to your kobolds. When you see a kobold, your automatic reaction is to kill it. I feel like if you saw a cyclops as a group, wandering and meandering around, your first response is going to be to kill it. Yes. Only because all I can think of is, like, um, what is that fucking video game called? Uh, Elder Scrolls. Okay. If you run across a cyclops, they're fucking scary as shit, and they will kill you. So you either run from it, or you fight it. Uh, whereas I feel like in this one, you, you could technically try and talk to your 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 right. cyclops if you wanted to. Um, they do tech I think they only speak one language. Let me just double check here. It's like they're somewhat misunderstood. There's more under the under the, yeah. the surface. They're not they're not just you know your regular little things yeah. here, right? That actually surprises me. Yeah. I didn't think that. Oh. Oh my goodness, are you turning the tables? <laughs> I'm turning the t I always turn the tables, Casey. That's what I'm here for. Um, they do have an intelligence of negative one and a wisdom of negative two, but their charisma score is zero, which means they're kind of average at being and existing. Okay. Um, but they're not like stupid, stupid. They are considered unwise and unsophisticated, like if you actually look at their stat blocks and stuff like that. But like numbers wise, they're not complete idiots, other than the fact that they can only speak giant. Okay. So you would have to have someone on your team that could speak giant to really communicate with one and talk to your talk to your cyclops. Yeah. Um, so, but I think I think they're quite cute, and <laughs> I would like to have one as my friend. Yeah. Yeah. We'll need to come up with a name for your cyclops. for my cyclops. Um, it would be eyelashes. <laughs> like like I dash. Lashes. Eyelashes. Yeah. <laughs> Eyelashes. It'd be short, just like little, like lowercase I, and then L A S H. Oh, capital L. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eyelashes. Gotcha. <laughs> like my iPhone, but for eyelashes. <laughs> uh, oh God. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, like I, I, I don't know. I don't find them extremely frightening now that I've read about them and I kind of like, know a little bit about them. I don't find them scary. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fight one. Like, if I was a tier one player and I only had, like, a team of three, I probably would not really want to fight one, like, one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like you don't have to get into fights with them. Yeah. And if they are, like, geared up and part of an army or something, it's probably not by their choice. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Like, I feel like they're, they, in my mind, if they are fighting against you in an army or in a coliseum or in the middle of town or as a guard, it's because they're working for someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why not have them work for you? Yeah. Offer them a better, de better deal. A better deal. And they'd be like, okay, come with us. We'll house you. We'll feed you. And just be our muscle for things. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, we're traveling through the mountains and we're going to need someone to carry our shit. Yeah. Convince it that you'll give it a better life. And then be like, come around with us. Right? I feel like I've, in more times than not, have befriended a Cyclops in a D&D campaign than I have killed. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You knew it already. And they're very useful. <laughs> like, they can be pack horses, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. your small creatures can ride on their shoulders. They become mounts for your other smaller creatures, right. right? Did you say they were large? They are considered to be huge. Huge. Okay. Yeah. And, again, chaotic neutral creatures, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that gives them, they're considered huge, but they do only have a 30-foot walking speed. Okay. But I feel like this comes with being a slow, bumbling idiot. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. sauntering around. Yeah. Today we're getting more into the, like, lumbering, the, the lumbering brute. Yeah. More classic lumbering brute. Right? Yeah. Kind of like your hill giant, but with a little bit more flavor and context and a bit of a different background. Yeah. Right? Because, like, similar to, like, the hill giant, where you find them pretty much anywhere, I feel like you could find a cyclops anywhere right. within a D&D campaign. That's fair. They're not really constrained to one place or another, other than the fact that they isolate themselves. So a good plot hook would be like, hey, like, we've had a Cyclops come in and steal our sheep, but we don't know where he is. Mm -hmm. And then it's your group's, like, side quest to go and find this Cyclops who's stealing the town's sheep or what have you. Yeah. And he's actually just stealing them to be his own farmer somewhere down the lane. <laughs> and you find him and he's just farming and he's got his own, like, flock of sheep now. You're like, dude, those aren't your sheep. And he's like, they are now. <laughs> and, like... They have the, the classic, like, I don't know, like, they have burned the emblem of the other farms thing in the sheep. You yeah. know how they do? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just, like, over top of the other, like, brand. <laughs> it's just, like... <laughs> There's just, like, some random shit over top of the other one. It's like, it didn't cover it up. It didn't work. It didn't work. I tried. I tried. But the sheep is mine now. Like, I saw that and I thought I would cover it up. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work very well. But these but, sheep are my friends now, so you can't take them. Yes, and you'd know none of that unless you spoke giant. <laughs> yeah, so get the fuck out of here. Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah. All right, what do you got to talk about? Ettens. <gasps> Tell me more uh, about Ettens. Ettens, okay. So, uh, Norse mythology heavy on yeah. this one in the background. Um, Jotun is the term for giant in Norse mythology. Yeah. A natural spirit with he superhuman strength. So it evolved to, like, the term Etten, which means ugly giant. I feel like we're going into the gruesome, like, not visibly, visually appealing. Yeah, absolutely. These days. <laughs> Just gross looking. So in ancient common language, Etten, ugly giant. Um, and so the name has roots in, like, hungry, eat, gluttony, man-eater, devourer. Um, there's always reference to, like, chaos. Yeah. So, like, lumbering, super strong, ugly being. The first living giant was called um, Emer, mm -hmm. in which other giants grew from different parts of its body. And that was sons and daughters and creatures, and many had different numbers of heads. Yeah. So we see two-headed Ettons in 5e, but other lore has them having three or even more yeah. sometimes. Multiples, yeah. Yeah. So focusing in on the lore from the 5th edition... Um, so I, I think this is why I have a soft spot for Ettons... <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's because way back when, in like two campaigns ago, uh, that Ad Adam ran a campaign for us and it had an Etten that ended up being part of our adventuring party. They were named Nosh Golok and Gomash Ekram. Yeah. And for short, Nosh Gomash. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Yeah, and they they hated each other, mm -hmm. <laughs> but were incredibly useful. Like, when we were amassing, trying to build shit, like, having an Etten on board on your side was great. Yeah. And, like, if we were attacked, wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was just great. And so, 
I didn't quite see kind of the the typical like evil side that Ettens could be or the ferocious side. <laughs> like it was just it was two idiots arguing with each other on one body. Yeah. Uh so yeah, that's probably why. Um and they were like a great member of our party. So if they are actually purely evil, like are we the baddies? <laughs> are we the bad guys? Am I the, am I the drama? <laughs> I'm not the drama. I don't know. No. I don't know. Yeah. I was just like, wait, am I, do I need to relive that campaign and realize something different? That you're a bitch? Absolutely. Like, oh, <laughs> well, shit. Shit. Uh, <laughs> it's like three years later. Yeah. <laughs> three years oh, later. Oh, goodness. <laughs> exactly. All right, go on. Um, yes, but they are orc-like. Okay. That's the reference in 5e. Uh, really dirty, really smelly. The dirtier, the better. To the point that if they have a thick layer of, like, crust of filth, yeah. they are happy. We love that. Uh, they, <laughs> and they are the classic, like we talked about, the classic, like, canine tusks. Mm -hmm. That's what they have. So, ugly, and, like, they're... I don't think it's as it's as harsh as like you have to you are traumatized, but you notice them mm -hmm. in how nasty they look. And they have two heads. Defining feature, <laughs> they have two heads. Um, and those two heads have different personalities, and typically they are annoying each other because Ettens are innately wanting to ha find solitude. Yeah, and they're forever not. Because they have to. Yeah. There's always someone there. Yes. Yeah. So they have individual names, and those names might just get mashed together, like I just did, yeah. for one name for what they are called. Um, so, I mean, having them in your party <laughs> is also annoying, because all they do is argue with each other. But they will fight a common enemy. Mm -hmm. They will agree to be part of a bigger group if they have a benefit to it. Yeah. Um, and with that, they each control one arm. So they each have an arm, they each have a weapon, mm -hmm. and so you do get a pretty beefy um, combatter with you. So one head also keeps watch while the other sleeps. So it's not... It's an ability called wakeful that they have. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily like... Just because they're smart, like, one keep watch, as you do when you have to Yeah, it's not only a protection thing. Yeah. No, it's it's that, oh my god, I finally have some solitude. Some peace and <laughs> fucking quiet. Yeah. So it's like, I will happily stay awake while you sleep, so yeah. I can just be one. Uh, so that's hilarious, and I feel like as a DM, you need to build that into your scenario. Yeah. They prefer solitude. And when they can never get it with having two heads, they don't seek out other ends. The only reason they do is to procreate. Okay. So they are isolate solitudes. Um, and the female Etten is the dominant gender. Phenomenal. <laughs> so we love to hear that. Yes. So they are the initiator of mating. Yeah. Um, when she has found a, an, an acceptable home... Acceptable is correct, yeah. She then hunts down her mate, mm -hmm. conquers them, mates, and the mate becomes her servant until the baby is born. <laughs> Dope. Yeah. What a great way to live. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yeah. We like, can really take a note from that book, you know? Like, okay. I have now had my child. You have brought me food for X amount of time. You are no longer needed. Like, farewell. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah, so that was great. I was really happy reading that. Uh, so the Monster Manual focuses more on the orcish lore. Mm -hmm. um, that essentially orcs found themselves in a temple to Demogorgon. Mm-hmm. And were thus magically transformed into a two-headed Demogorgon. And then thrust back into the wilderness in a state of madness. So that's the origins that presents itself um, for us. 
Yeah. Yeah, which I didn't actually realize yeah. how they were made. I would not have put the fact that they have any connection to the Demogorgon together. Yes, but yeah, yeah it's it's a pretty hefty um, lore. Yeah. But there's many. Yeah, that works. Um, so you then would find them potentially among orc hordes, uh, because orcs would essentially accept them as, like, distant relatives. Fair and enough. Ettons will work for rewards like food. Yeah. So it's like, okay, like, let me do this for you. I'm large. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they might end up being in cohorts with orcs and other creatures, um, in their distant relativ- relativity, but they won't seek out other Ettons. Okay. Um, so Ettons are pretty common all the way back to first edition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've been around. There hasn't really been any major changes to them along the way, um, aside from just like their size designation. Tui had them as huge instead of large, pretty yeah. minor. Yeah, yeah. Where you'll find them is more rocky and remote borderlands, forested mountains, hillsides, and valleys. And actually, they prefer cooler areas. So they may head underground into abandoned mines or caves. Uh, So I think that gives you a lot of freedom as a DM to throw them in, in different scenarios. So they could be something you just randomly encounter, depending on where you're going to. Or they could also be... um, like someone that's working for yeah something else yeah it would not be group. uncommon just to come across one when you're exploring or moving through a, a mountain or going through a mountainous town or something yeah. like that like you'll probably find them around yeah yeah and i kind of imagine if you're moving through say like a forested mountaintop mm. and you just start hearing an argument between two people <laughs> and say your most perceptive player character picks up on it yeah and so then you move cautiously say you send your rogue to go investigate (laughs) you just like for the longest time it's there's two creatures arguing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then you get to it and it's an end and the two heads are just like arguing over some stupid shit and yeah (laughs) that would be a fun way to interact yeah we're like i just saw a weird thing you come back to your party like there is a thing that it's strange and it's just one thing but with two heads (laughs) (laughs) i love it yeah um so if we go into the stat block they are large size chaotic evil Mm -hmm. yeah and again i i think adam played with that when he brought that into our campaign unless we're the baddies yeah. Maybe we were. We, I mean, <laughs> we don't do well at yeah. being good. We tend, we tend to be the baddies. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Pretty easily killable. They have natural armor. They, like, AC is 12. HP is far below 185. Mm-hmm. So they're, like, they're generally pretty squishy. If you wanted to fight them, they wouldn't last long. Um, speed of 40 feet. So if they decided to peace out, they would they would get away from you. They do have dark vision of 60 feet, um, which tracks from what we've talked about a lot too. Uh, their solitude, they generally try to find areas of recluse, which I imagine just means that they then keep their own watch a lot of the time. And with Ettons, they have two heads. Yeah, they so, can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No big deal. Uh, they speak giant and orc. And so I couldn't get into whether the languages changed in the other editions, but it tracks with just the lore that 5e has put forward that yeah. they would speak giant They and derive orc. from, so why would they not? Yeah. Yeah. And CR4. So you can throw them in pretty early in yeah. a campaign. Yeah, especially like... I, from a physical, like, fighting standpoint, absolutely you could, but also from, like, a communication standpoint, like, a CR4 is pretty safe to have a conversation with and still be a twat waffle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do. I do know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're back to more, like, a lumbering brute giant. Um, quite strong, not necessarily smart. However, because of the two heads, they have advantage on wisdom checks and saving throws. So spells that are wisdom-based may not work as well as you think. 
Um, so these are blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, stunned, knocked unconscious. Yeah. Because there's two, there's two brains to deal with. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, spellcasters might re realize that too late. Yeah, <laughs> have a bit of an issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, as actions, they do have multi-attack. They have two attacks, and they do one with each arm, which is controlled by each head. Either or, yeah. There's a battle axe, and there's a morning star. Yeah. Uh, both are five foot reach and two d eight plus five damage. So equivalent. There's no advantage for using one or the other, uh, but they get both attacks. I don't know. I would like to say you could play it a lot more loose than chaotic evil. You could mix it up. That's kind of our theme. The last little while is just yeah. You could play it lawful stupid yeah. if you wanted to. Arguing that narrative. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Literally back and forth. Yeah, like. I've had experience playing them where they they were great to have on your side, but they weren't necessarily chaotic evil in the sense that they're just out to um, destroy whatever's in their way or, like, destroy you even though you've helped them. Yeah. Like, they're a little bit more reasonable, but not quite as reasonable, perhaps, as the Cyclops. I, don't, I feel like they might actually be more reasonable. What's their intelligence and their wisdom? Let me check. Uh, intelligence, minus two, wisdom, zero. Yeah. That's really, I feel like they're kind of on par with, like, they're on par Are with they? each other. One or the other. Because, yeah. like, um, yeah, because the Cyclops was uh, intelligence, negative one, wisdom, negative two. <laughs> okay. So well. they're kind of, like, on par <laughs> with each other for intelligence and, like, being able to determine things about what their surroundings are. Right. But um, I think the fun part for role play though, would be the fact that they talk to each other. Do you have any advice yes. for, like, DMs on how to roleplay that for, like, having to talk back and forth? Um, I would say make sure that they're different characters. Yeah. So go, like, do do enough prep that they are two different personalities. Two different voices. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> um, and see what your players do with that. Mm -hmm. Like, players, like Dan. <laughs> like Dan. Like... We'll know what to expect with with an N, but new players might not. And so it could be really entertaining to do the combat of two heads. Yeah. Almost like it. a good versus evil thing, too, if you want to. Be like, oh, you let's could. kill and eat it. The other one's like, no, 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 they're, they're friends, they're friends. No, yes. we kill, we eat. Like, Yes. And I think... To properly introduce an Etten to a scenario, that's what you do, is you have them arguing with each other. And even, say, they're trying to be quiet, because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like, oh, I think somebody's coming. But one is always louder than the other, <laughs> yes. always. It's like, yeah. nah, you're making it up. I don't hear anything. It's like, no, there's something coming down the road. I can hear it. You it's can't like, hear it because you're <laughs> stupid, but I can fucking yes. hear it. <laughs> like, that's how you introduce an Etten. Yeah. And, like, veteran players might realize what it is. Other players won't. They might truly think it's two people until you reveal what it is. Yeah. So I can't imagine having, funny. like, two or three Ettons in the same space. Oh, they would hate it. <laughs> and having to, like, and, like they, would, they would hate it, but I can't imagine that would happen. And then you were having to DM, like, six voices for three characters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that would be so awful. But yeah. No, I like the idea of having, like, the peaceful one versus the evil one. Seems very classic to me. Yeah. But I feel like you could also do, like, the super smart one and then, like, the really stupid one. <laughs> like, play on the very opposites of personalities. Or just one is kind, one is really mean. Uh, one is insulting, one is arrogant. Uh, one is super proud, one is very shy, right? Like, really go right. very strong in one direction or the other. Like, you don't have to go super evil and good. Like, I like the idea of the proud and the shy. Yeah. Like, that would be really fun to play. Like, someone's just, like, super boisterous and be like, oh! Look at these fair folks in front of us. The other one's like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this, Jerry. I don't like it. Oh, my God. I would like to go home now. Jerry, take me home. I'm not, no, I don't want to be here, you know? Like, yeah. And say you come across them when they're, like, sleeping. Yeah. And there's only one awake. And, like, say it's the one that hates doing watch. It's like, God damn it, there's something coming. Of course this would happen on my watch. Of course. It's Absolutely. Like, Jerry, right. Jerry, wake up. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Those are so cute. Um, 
But yeah, I feel like, uh, what would be a good plot hook, you think, to have these enter into your campaign? Like, would you just do it through exploration, or would you try and, like, implement them in a different way? Exploration would be, like, pretty simple. Like, the random encounter, like, process? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also think in a very poorly managed, like, castle where <laughs> where there's just mismanagement, yeah. you could have somebody assign them to be, like, the the guard at the door. <laughs> and then you end up being able to get in just because they start arguing amongst themselves. And you just sneak around them. Yeah. Yeah. And then you walk in. So you could put them in a little bit of, like, hilarious situations there. Yeah. And you never need to fight them. You can just, like... Con- confuse them. <laughs> confuse them, then they start <laughs> arguing amongst themselves, and you move on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can imagine, like, the whole scenario where you rock up, you start talking to them, you realize they don't really like each other very much, and then you're like, oh, this one said that, like, your your breath smells. Yeah. And then they would just start fighting with each other. Yes. And then you're like, okay, peace out, like, bye-bye, <laughs> like, bye, have a nice night, right? Like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so think of those kind of weird scenarios, too, where you could bring them in. Yeah, like, yeah, to your point, like, guards would be good. Um, I always come back to labyrinths, like, I feel, labyrinths, the labyrinth, I always come back to that. I think they would be fun, because, again, like, labyrinths are all, labyrinths, labyrinths. (laughs) What is the plural form of that? When you come into a labyrinth, usually, (laughs) things will be very trickstery, like, tricksy, and, like, I don't know what's wrong with my words right now. I feel like I'm you in episode nine. Um, but, like, they would have riddles for you, and, like, they would try and make you figure out a riddle, but then they would fight about what the riddle was, but, oh, Kevin, you got it wrong. Yes! That's not what it is! You know, like, they would fight with each other in front of you and be like, ah, what do I do? Or, and the one would accidentally give the answer. Yeah. (laughs) Like, how are they... (laughs) that xyz <laughs> no, they're not gonna get it like <laughs> but like again it's uh, different types of interactions like they can have like the riddle like conversation interaction or you can be like they start fighting and then they get so angry that they start lashing out at you and then a battle does ensue yeah um and then like your team has to figure out a way to either befriend them calm them down again it like it comes to the different types of combat or different kinds of interactions that you want to have i feel like ettons really play into all of them yeah you can do any of them with an Etnan. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where it's very similar to Cyclops. Yeah. yeah. Where Cyclopses can be used anywhere. Mm-hmm. Again, they can be within a labyrinth. They can be uh, conversational should, you know, you have the opportunity to be able to do so. Um, you can even just, like, again, they could probably be a guard, like, just if, like, at a cavern or something like that. Again, they work for people. Like, Etnans could also work for people. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Just for, like, survival purposes, like, all that kind of stuff, right? But, yeah, any final thoughts? Did I did I convince you with Cyclopses at all, or are you still, like, Ettons are my favorite? Well, I mean, I, I, there's, there's a sliver. I, like, I get it. Like, there's something there. There's, I understand There's what something like. there. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised at how much variety of myth and lore there is behind these two things, uh, because you just kind of think they're basic. Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of basic. They're basic. I do find uh, a lot of DMs do make that mistake, though, where they're like, okay, I'm just going to throw a Cyclops in here without thinking about the back history. Yes. And then your, your group of, like, adventurers would be like, oh, what's your name? <laughs> and which is, like, every DM's worst nightmare when you've thrown <laughs> a monster in there and you're like, I don't know what his fucking name is. Like, <laughs> and then, like, of course, they speak giant or they speak, like, uncommon or something that they would know. And then you as a DM have to, like, pivot and be like, oh, my God, I have to give this person a backstory and a history. Yes. Without looking it up, right? Yeah. And um, I do find that when we do random encounters, sometimes, like, um, I don't know how other, like, people do random encounters, but you'll, sometimes you'll pick, like, a random card out of a deck and be like, this is the random encounter that you have. Or roll a dice, and then out of 20, you have a list of 20 different creatures that will suddenly come out of the forest, right? And you'll, like, have a Cyclops on that list. But if you don't know what the history of a Cyclops is, and suddenly your team fucking decides to be like, oh, I want to be friends with this bitch. Yeah. It's like, ah, shit. Does that make sense? Now you have to do a little bit of history, right? (laughs) Yeah. And it's very easy. All you have to do is read, like, the small little blurb that's within the campaign books. And, like, to our point, that even these ones just come straight out of the monster manual. Yeah. Like, Cyclops and Ettons both come right out of the 5th edition monster manual. It's not very hard to just look one up, read the blurb, and be like, okay, there's a little bit of history there. Like... Kevin yeah. might come from this such and such place. 
Um, and, you know, random name generator, do your thing, and then you've got a little bit more flavor to it, right? For those, because there's our players that are going to be super explorative, right? They're going to want to know everything to know about these creatures. There's, there, but then you're going to have murder hobos that don't give a shit. And I feel like you, as a yes. DM, will eventually figure out which one your team is. Yeah. And then be able to go through the shitty thing. I feel sorry for is like a lot of DMs will have one at each, like one of each at, at your table. Yeah. So it's kind of like hard to plan for. Like, is this a lazy DM day or is this like I actually have to do my history like DM day? You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Yeah, agreed. Um, they're unlike some of the ones we, some of the giants we talked about last session, where they were really unique, had really cool and unique. Um, features they were terrifying <laughs> very frightening <laughs> might come up in only kind of somewhat specific scenarios we're back to like you can generally bring them up in any any scenario um and play with it and i mean you don't have to go into it if your players don't give a shit but if they do there's a lot of flavor there yeah and it can be really cute right yeah. like again as i mentioned like earlier in the episode i've befriended more cyclopses than i have killed <laughs> I love that. So it's one of those things where, like, you as a DM can determine what kind of player your, your team, your group is. Yeah. Are they going to want to befriend this thing because it's cute, or are they going to want to kill it? Right. Are they going to want to talk to this Etten to figure it shit out, or are they going to get annoyed with it? Like, these are things that you can almost predetermine, depending on how long you've played with your group of people. Yeah. Or just throw them in as random encounters in the middle of the night and hope they survive. Yeah. Right? You can really any of these things. So, <laughs> again, like, to your point, we're getting more into the malleable, we can do whatever we want with these ones. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. but yeah, so that's all for this giant winter special episode on Cyclopses and Nettons. Stay tuned next week when we go from dumb to dumber and explore the giant kin with the most variations in 5th edition. Thanks for listening to this special episode of the It's a Mimic podcast. If you'd like to support us, we have a donate button on our website, www.itsamimic.com. And if you'd like to discuss what you've heard today, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and at r slash it's a mimic. For other episodes on other kinds of monsters, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again for listening to It's a Mimic, where you never know what you're going to get. Nailed it! All right, back to it. Episode three in one day. They're Hi, not, Adam. They're not going to know. They're never going to know. How are they going to know? They're never going to know. <laughs> You're welcome to another episode <laughs> of our conversation on Giants and Dungeons and Dragons 5th yeah, edition. not the third bottle of alcohol. <laughs> I mean, we're doing pretty good. Like, we, we went with about half a bottle of that I one. know. And, like, a little bit of sake. But sake is, like, hold on. A lot. 12%. Yeah. I purposely, I purposely nursed a little bit on the first one. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay. We don't want a repeat of episode nine. (laughs) (laughs) And no to Casey, don't take the other half of the allergy pill. (laughs) Fair enough. Stick to half. Fair enough. Oh, sorry, Adam. Adam's like, this is a long intro, (laughs) guy. Sorry. Just giving you some content. All right. Some content. (laughs) What great content this is. You're fucking welcome. All right. Cheers. Cheers.